Good morning, folks. Once again, we see some eruptive activity on the far side of the sun. You're looking for the ripples near the top. But the Earth-facing solar quiet continues. We've got some enormous plasma filaments that may each be linked to one another, arching up over the incoming limb from just south of the equator to well north near the polar coronal opening. Over at spaceweathernews.com, we find no solar flaring, and that is a bit surprising because of new sunspots born two days ago and which have been growing quickly, but which are also magnetically spread left and right. Got a mix to get those big flares. Some potential trailing behind it, with a few mesospots entering on the north. It would appear that the magnetic field activity extending from the mesospots and plagues back across the bow is far more influential than the umbral fields on the south. While we don't have any magnetic storms or disruptions, the KP index is a shade away from instability and the magnetometers are showing something other than all quiet just after the new day began in universal time. The solar wind's primary telemetry doesn't show us much, but the magnetic character of the particles holds the key. The phi angle had spent the last few hours doing a 180 degree flip to set the BZ to negative and allow for direct plasma introduction into the system. It was minor. Anyway, how's that for a coronal hole shape on the left there? That's like the 2012 pyramid coronal hole. Remember that one? It might appear that we are in between coronal hole factors, and we are a bit, but the IMF from that dark triangle is already affecting Earth. So let's take a moment now to recognize the difference between the top magnitude quake of the day, a six-pointer that rang as high as 6.3 on the charts and which is likely linked with volcanic activity nearby, and the most significant quake of the last day, much lower magnitude in California. This is magnitude versus unusual location uptick, an important distinction. Being featured right now at the Observers is the free material on suspiciousobservers.org homepage. You can honestly get caught up with a lot of the community thoughts and ideas in just a short amount of time. Website members. The featured premium content is yesterday's fly on the wall discussion. You feel like getting mad? We also have a poll on that page I'd love you guys to take so we can make a group decision. For those who don't know, it is our website's birthday week, which means the price is lower at just 20 bucks for a whole year, and the price is locked in on a year-over-year -year basis so it can't go up. More details coming at the end, so pay attention. Looking at the United States, we see weaker systems today, but flash flooding is possible at the main convergence flows up through the center and to Florida there. We've got two systems in Europe, powerful lows shifting due eastward and then carrying with them major storm potential. We saw tornadoes dropping in Sweden, a highly rare event. Down under, we see lows and convergence lines. Not sure how severe these will actually be, but it's the top alert aside from some northwest Australian rain and flood potential. Folks who want to take advantage of the lower membership price lock-in for suspiciousobservers.org. You can't make changes to your account until it expires, so if yours expires after this week and you need to lock in that lower price, either you need to clear your current membership, make a new one using a different email, or as a last resort, ask me to clear the account for you. Birthday week ends July 31st, so time is a factor. You're looking at current conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.